Well, good Friday morning, friends. Overflow Church, so good to see you this morning. This beautiful Friday morning that we are going, I want to give all of my friends just a few minutes to be able to to come on and say good morning. And in fact, um, as you're as you're coming on, I encourage you to get a cup of coffee. We're going to have a, a few minutes together just in the Word of God this morning. That's going to be incredible. So as you come on, I would even say as we're as we're coming on as creatively as you want to go ahead and greet one another. Bonus points for most creative morning greeting for one another. I see Miss Jerry McCants is on this morning. So good to see you, Jerry. We'll give a few minutes for uh, for everybody to come on. And as creatively as you want to greet your friends around you. Most creative greeting this Friday. That's what we're looking for. Most creative greeting as you're coming on. And uh, as you come in, in just a few minutes, we'll get started. Good morning, Robin. That's great. I'll give just another another minute or two for friends to come on. And I know that we'll have more join us as we get rolling. But you can take an opportunity to say good morning to one another. That will be great. Well, this is what I want to share this morning, that in Christ we have peace with God. We presently have peace with God. And in the New Testament, peace means three different things, and I want to talk about that this morning. The first one, when the New Testament talks about peace, it means an exemption from the rage and havoc of war. Peace means exemption from the rage and havoc of war. And so I want you to think about this. In the Garden of Eden, when we ate of the fruit, what we were actually doing is we were declaring war against God. Eating that fruit was a declaration that we wanted to be our own kings and that we were trying to attempt to acquire the same knowledge as him. When he said, you'll know the same things that God knows, that's the whole point, is that we were trying to get the same knowledge as him so we could displace him. So listen, in the Garden of Eden, what was happening was humanity was declaring war against God. And in sin, humanity has continued to declare war against each other. We've constructed a million dividing walls of race and nationality and gender and politics and resources in this narrative of us versus them that continually says, these are my people, but I'm not my brother's keeper. Now, this is what I want you to understand. If humanity declared war against God, if humanity declared war against one another, On the cross, Jesus came to us, he died for us, and he rose as us so that the war we started would be over. That's good. I'm going to say it again. On the cross, this is what Jesus did. Jesus came to us, he died for us, and he rose as us so that the war we started would be over. I want you to understand this. The cross is not putting an end to the war of God's anger. The cross is God inviting us to end the wars of ours. See, the Bible says the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. It means this. It means before he ever created us and before we ever fell, he was already on the cross. It says that while we were his enemies, that Christ abandoned heaven, he took our place and he died instead of us because we serve a God who would rather die for his enemies than kill them. And we're called to be ambassadors of this peace, to declare the goodness of a God who invites the entire world to lay down their weapons. But if we're ever going to be in the place where we could be people who release peace, we first need to understand that we've presently received peace. I want to read this to you this morning. This is Romans 5.1. It says this, Our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us, and he now declares us flawless in his eyes. This means we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God, all because of what our Lord Jesus, the anointed one, has done for us. So listen, when does it say we can enjoy peace? We can now enjoy peace. We can now enjoy peace. Why? Because of what Jesus has done. The name Satan in the Bible, it literally means accuser. So anytime you hear about Satan, they're talking about the accuser. And what he wants more than anything is to accuse our heart and to accuse our motives so he would steal our peace. And I want you to understand his biggest weapon is he wants to use your present performance against you. He wants you to stand and try to defend how well you're doing. 
But right now we live in a new place. We were co-crucified with Christ. Here's what that means. That means all the performance of striving to do enough so you can be enough died on the cross with Jesus. It's gone. Our effort counts for nothing. And peace has become a transaction and a transfer. Jesus purchased peace for humanity on the cross once for all. Somebody say with me, for all. All This narrative of our enemies, the us versus them, has to go because he came as good news of great joy for all people. He came once for all to establish peace, and the reality is that any who receive that peace, so this morning, if you're in Christ, I want you to say, that's me. Anybody who comes to him and says, Lord, be my Savior, he says that there's a transfer that has taken place, that you now live in a new state where you're continually clothed in his righteousness apart from your performance. So what does that mean? It means that we have to stop trusting our present performance to give us peace. We have to stop trusting our present performance to give us peace. Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. The Lord is your strong tower, not you. Run into the Lord and you'll be safe. So I would say to all of us this morning, what we might need to hear is, take off the cape, Clark. You don't need to be Superman anymore, okay? It's not your present performance that gives you peace, We've got to stop believing that we only deserve peace when we're praying enough, reading our Bible enough, being a patient enough parent, because the reality is if we're not careful, that's us trying to be our own savior. And friends, that's nothing short of idolatry. That's trying to make ourselves sufficient when we've actually been called to be son sufficient. See, his peace has permanently transferred Um, He has permanently transferred his peace to our account, meaning that we're enough. So Galatians 5 says this. It says that now peace is a fruit in your life. If you're in the Holy Spirit, it's a fruit of the Holy Spirit. You've been planted in Jesus and now you naturally bear peace. It's always yours. The fruit is always in season and there's always more than enough. So for my kids, obviously having seven kids at home, they get hungry a lot and they want snack time all the time. So my wife and I instituted a rule. We've got this drawer in our fridge called the fruit drawer. And in the fruit drawer, this is what we say, if ever you're hungry, we don't want you to worry, we don't want you to strive, we don't want you to beg, we don't want you to ask if it's snack time. The fruit drawer is always available for you. There will always be fruit there. It's always there, it's already yours, and we will keep it stocked. This is what I would say to you. Peace is a fruit of the Holy Spirit that is in the fridge, in the fruit drawer, and it is already yours. Anytime you feel you don't have peace, you don't strive for it, and you don't beg for it, you go to the pantry, and you go and say, Father, I'm just asking right now that you would open my eyes to see the peace that you already purchased for me, because peace is already mine. A second truth I want to tell you about peace this morning is this. Peace, a second definition. Peace is the assurance that you are presently secure, safe, and provided for so you can rest. Peace is the assurance that you are presently secure, safe, and provided for so you can rest. You know, it's pretty crazy as I've been studying the Bible and what it has to say about peace, I've seen this theme. Usually, when the Bible talks about peace, it's when people are in the midst of a scary, stressful, heartbreaking, uncertain, or difficult time. Anybody there right now? Anybody in a time that's uncertain, that's difficult, where you have questions? Right now, this is what I want you to do. If you're in an uncertain time, and our whole world is in an uncertain time now, this is what I want you to do with me this morning. I want you to take your hand. I want you to place it on your heart. I want you to breathe real deeply, and what you're going to do is you're going to speak to your spirit right now, and I want you just to say this. I want you to tell your heart something. I want you to say, in Christ, you are secure. Tell yourself that right now. You are secure. You are safe. There's nothing to fear. You've been given all you need. You are being provided for so you can rest. Would you just lead your heart right now and say, you can rest? That's what peace does. Peace is a gift from God that releases great confidence and joy so that you can rest in times of trouble and opposition. I want you to hear this. Philippians 4 says this, the Apostle Paul said, do not be anxious about anything. What, we, what can we be anxious about? 
Nothing. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So when does he say peace is ours? He says when you're in your worst Paul wrote these words when he was in prison being beaten and tortured. His reputation was being run through the mud and all he had done to deserve it was loving Jesus and being willing to lay down his life for people. And in the midst of this circumstance, he doesn't say one day I'll have peace. He said right now in everything I can have peace. How? What's the prerequisite? Is it that I'll have peace once my circumstances change? No. Is it I'll have peace because I prayed holy enough and I feel worthy enough? No. What's his prerequisite? Look at it. It's very simple. Be honest. It's just messy vulnerability. Tell God all of your heart. Tell him everything that's threatening your peace. Stop pretending. Often I find in my life, and maybe it's yours too, The enemy tries to use the goodness of my heart against me. See, if you're like me, I don't like to complain, and I never want to be mad at God. I never want to be at the place where I'm accusing God. And so what I find is there's this Christian culture where we can start to sanitize what we're feeling, even to ourselves. And then what we'll do is we'll we'll hold the official party line and we'll say what we feel a good Christian should. And we'll only let ourselves think what we think a good Christian should. So every time there's a problem, it's, well, this isn't going well, but I know God has a plan. I know everything's going to work out. When you're actually really maybe struggling to trust and see even where God is in it. I want you to understand that saying what a good Christian should is not good and it's not Christian. It's dishonest and it's insincere, and it will make your heart sick. Peace is always preceded by honesty. Peace is always preceded by honesty. For some this morning, maybe you're in a place where you're broken, and you need to trust the Father enough just to tell him what's actually going on in your world. You need to get real and stop sanitizing it, and he makes a promise to you. He says, if you'll simply do that, I promise that I'll give you a peace that won't even make sense in your circumstances. It will surpass your understanding. You won't have words to explain it. You can only live in it. I want to give you just a few more verses here this morning. John 16, because peace is so important for the times we're in. John 16, listen to what Jesus said for us in days like today. He says, everything I've taught you, okay, that's going to be important. Jesus has given a framework for everything he said. Everything I taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrows, but be courageous. I have already conquered the world. I want you to understand something this morning. What is Jesus offering? He said, the same exact peace that is in me, I want to be in you. Can somebody say with me this morning, whoa, Jesus says the same peace, the same exact peace, the God who knows what words are because he created language would not tell you that you can have the same exact peace that Jesus embodied if he didn't mean it. He said, the same peace that's in me will be in you and all you need to do is receive it because I already conquered the world. And he says, when you see what's yours, when you would receive this peace, you will have, this is John 16, you will have great confidence to rest in me. What does it mean? It means your peace is not based on the landscape of your circumstances today. Your circumstances and your performance can change all over the map, but you can have great confidence to rest because he already conquered the world and you can breathe and say, my God's got me. So what does peace mean? One, peace means exemption from the rage and havoc of war. You, beloved child of God, are exempt forever from the rage of havoc and war. You only get adoration from your father. The second thing it means is the assurance that you're presently secure, you're safe, you're provided for. So right now in this moment, in your circumstances, in your present performance, you can rest But the third thing peace means, and this is my favorite one, peace literally means in the Bible, whenever you read grace and peace to you, peace means intense happiness. Somebody say it with me, intense happiness. It's intense joy. And here's the thing, when you see a God who pursues his enemies so much that he will die for them rather than kill them. When you see a God who ends all the wars we start, do you understand that? Jesus died as the last sacrifice. We need to stop scapegoating people. 
He was the, like, the side note here. So people have asked the question, did God send the coronavirus as a curse? No, Jesus became a curse for us. He was the last curse. Why is God cursing things? We started the war. We released the curse. He came in our place and he ended it. That's our God. And when you see that, you have intense happiness. You have intense peace. When you see that peace is not based on our circumstances or our performance, which can be all over the map, but on the finished work of God that's been transferred in your account, then you understand something. Listen, the peace of God is like your stimulus check, right? You're just sitting at home, resting, minding your own business, and boom, it's in your account. You didn't do anything. You're just sitting. That's the peace of God. It's already in your account. The difference is it's more than enough, and it will never run out. When you understand that our Jesus came not just to give you this, but to release this peace for the whole world. And then you understand that presently you're a carrier. Then we shift in our, in our position. No longer do we get through today saying, peace is something that I need to receive. No, I'm a carrier of peace. Peace isn't just a privilege I receive. Peace is a power I carry. Peace isn't just a privilege I receive. Peace is a power I carry. This is what Jesus said in Matthew 5, 9. He said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons and daughters of God. Now that peacemaker, that's a compound word. It means one who forms and creates and knits peace where there is none. Did you know God's greatest joy as creator is to make you co-creators with him? And what he's done in this earth where there's lots of trouble is he allows you to create peace. When he says you're a peacemaker, he says you're a peace former, knitter, creator. You bring peace where there is none. It means somebody who steps into an arena of their home or their family or their job or a relationship or a region or a nation when there's no peace. And because peace is the fruit they bear, that wherever they're planted, they create and knit and fashion and release peace. So please hear me very clearly. I've asked people say, you know, the quarantine's carrying on longer and I don't want to minimize any of this. Okay. The problems in our economy, the problems with sickness, the problems with all that. I get it. But Paul said that we have peace in all things when he was in prison, when he was literally dying for his faith. And right now, what I want to say to us this morning, when we say, what is it we're going to do? We just need to get through the quarantine. No, don't just get through the quarantine, make peace, release peace, create peace. I want to give one final verse. Some of the last words Jesus spoke to us. He said this. Jesus spoke and said, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I am sending you. That's John 20, 21. Peace I leave with you as the Father sent me. Now I'm sending you. And so here's the charge I want to leave us with this morning, beloved brothers and sisters, beloved friends. It's time for us to be commissioned as peace makers. Right now that we would receive and acknowledge and understand the overwhelming amount of intense joy and happiness God wants to put in us and that we would walk in such a way that we know peace isn't just our privilege, it's a power we release to the whole world. And so with that, I just want to invite you right now just to pray with me. Would you just join me in prayer? I want to ask a few questions this morning. The first thing I want to ask is this, where is it right now that you need to stop trusting and looking to your performance and your circumstances to give you peace? Proverbs says that hope deferred will make the heart sick. When you look to something to give you peace that can't give you peace, your heart's going to get sick. When you look to your performance, how well you pray, how strong you are, it's not going to give you peace. You can take off the cape, Clark. You don't need to be Superman anymore. Your Superman came for you. His name is Jesus. He's the strong tower where you're safe. Right now, if you've been looking to your performance to give you peace, would you lay it down? If you've been looking at your circumstances, you say, well, I have peace, but this person said, and this thing said, and this circumstance, and this in the bank account, and this report from the doctor, would you understand right now that peace is a transfer and the check is already in your account? He's already put it there. Right now, would you say, God, just open my eyes to show me that the same peace that was in Jesus is mine and I receive it. Would you just receive it right now? Right now, Lord, I receive your peace. I'd ask you the question this morning, where is it you need to be honest with God? Maybe there's some places where you're really struggling to see where he is and where he's working, but you have built this 
quasi-Christian doctrine of sanitizing everything and saying what a good Christian does. It's neither good nor Christian. Peace is preceded by honesty. I would challenge you, maybe today you need to go for a walk. And just for the first time in your life, for the first time in a long time, just to be honest with God, to actually trust the Father enough to tell him everything that's going on inside of you, he already knows. And he says that if you would just be honest, that what he's going to release for you in your honesty is a peace that surpasses your understanding. Hmm. The last question I want to ask this morning, where right now in your life is there a void of peace? Where right now in your home, in your family, in your work, in, in, in church, in relationships, where is it that there's been a void of peace and maybe you've been complaining or maybe you've been worrying and now is the time for you to understand that the Holy Spirit has given you the authority to create peace, to make peace. Would you say, Father, I'm not just gonna walk in the privilege of peace, I'm gonna receive the power of it. I'm gonna release peace where there is none. And so, Father, as I pray for my beloved brothers and sisters today, I stand with them, Lord, we receive your peace. And I just speak the blessing of 2 Thessalonians 3.16 over all of us today. Now may the Lord himself, may the Lord of peace in every home, in every ear hearing this, may the Lord of peace pour his peace into you right now in every circumstance and in every possible way. May he pour his peace in every circumstance in every possible way. And may the Lord's tangible presence be with you all. And if you agree with that, say amen. Amen. It's a good Friday today. Every Friday is good Friday because we walk in the joy of the resurrection. We've been challenging everybody to do four things as we walk through this season. And so I just want to hit this real quick as we finish up today. First, we've been challenging us as the church with the big C of the living God to walk and to be with God during this season. The whole reason we started these devotions here was not just for us to come on and talk. The whole reason is we wanted to give you opportunities to know your identity on a deeper level and to be still with your father, to hear his voice and to experience intimacy. So I don't know if you know it or not, but every one of our daily devotionals has been themed for a purpose. There's this devotional that a while ago, Pastor Cindy and Pastor Chris and myself, we spent hours just being before the Lord asking, how is it that we help people understand not only their identity, but how can we give people experiences and opportunities where they can get still with God? And so we released this devotional. You'll see today's devotion, actually, I have peace with God. But the thing that we actually did with this is this wasn't intended just to be something we preach. That's an opportunity for you to be still. So right now on this link, there's a PDF devotional that talks about your peace with God and the whole thing's built for you just to be still with your father. And I wanna promise you, 10,000 of these messages could never be worth one moment of you hearing your father's voice. And so the biggest thing we want for you in this season is be still and learn to hear your father. You can use that devotion. We've made it entirely free. That devotion's on Amazon, but we've made it entirely free on myoverflowchurch.com. And we're releasing these daily as we do it because we want the children of God globally to know how to hear the father's voice. So please take advantage of that. Would we just be? I wanna challenge you this morning to share. As you take this, listen, we have a world that has many places they're devoid of peace and they need to know that the peace of God has come and that we are called to be peacemakers and peace releasers. You can go right now on the bottom of this video and just share it. Share it and say, we have peace with God. We're releasing the peace of God. You can share the video. We wanna challenge you during this time, the third challenge to give. During these days, keep giving to your local church where you are because we know that we're in unprecedented days and the church of the living God, which is called to be the hope of the world, needs to be positioned to be ready to meet the needs of people. And so that's what Overflow Church is doing. We're positioning to meet the needs of people in our community. Your giving to the church continues to do that. And then the very last thing I wanna challenge you to do this morning is to go. The reality is regardless of your circumstances, regardless of your performance, in Christ, you have been planted in peace. You're a tree that not only bears peace that you can receive, you're a peace maker. Eat deeply of its fruit and create and make peace everywhere there is none until the whole world knows the peace and the love of our God. God bless you. Have a wonderful Friday. We'll see you Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. right back here.